Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Sullivan. About four and a half years ago, I created a video called Finding Copyright-Free Images for Catechetical Use, which quickly became one of my most popular videos I've ever put on YouTube. I thought, since it's been a while since I put that video up, that it would be a good idea to revisit some of the ideas in there and share some new image sites that I found that I really like that are a great source for images that you are free to use in your catechetical work or in your ministry. But first, I think it's important to go back and reiterate why understanding copyright and respecting copyright is so important for those of us who work in the church. In its most simple terms, copyright is an acknowledgement that when someone creates a work, whether that's a painting, uh, composes a song, takes a photograph, they have a right to ownership of that work. They have created it, it is theirs, and it's not just available for anyone to use. That's even true if they choose to put that thing online. Just because I post a blog post uh, doesn't mean that I give up the right to ownership to the, that writing. Uh, it doesn't mean that just anyone can take that copy it, and publish it as their own. Rather, it means that I have an ownership to that piece of work. And so those of us working in church ministry, uh, it behooves us to respect civil law and the moral law and recognize that people have a right to ownership of the things they create. So copyright is a legal structure that uh, helps to protect artists' work from being appropriated by other people, stolen, and then used in other ways that they may or may not agree with. Now that legal structure isn't indefinite, and so when a copyright has expired, it is said to go into the public domain. And public domain works are just available for any kind of use. There are no restrictions at all on public domain works. However, because public domain only comes into effect uh, after many, many years after a work's been created and the original author has uh, passed away, uh, public domain works tend to be older. So you're not going to find a lot of modern movies in the public domain or even modern music or anything like that. Um, there is one exception to that, though, which is actually anything created by an employee of the federal government in the course of their work is by definition in the public domain. So uh, photographs taken by White House photographers, music that's recorded by armed services, bands, those are in the public domain. And so those kinds of things can be found online and used in any way you want because they're in the public domain. But because there's so few things in the public domain that uh, that are modern and, and, uh, and up to date, uh, in recent years, people online have created a new licensing structure called Creative Commons, which allows copyrighted works to be used under certain sets of circumstances. So it's important to note, if something is released under a Creative Commons license, that doesn't mean that it's in the public domain. It still has a copyright. A Creative Commons license just means that the original author has said, I still retain copyright to this, but I'm going to allow other people to use this work under the restrictions that I've set up, depending on what kind of Creative Commons license they've put into place. So there's four main restrictions that you'll usually see when you take something from Creative Commons. The first is an attribution. So if there's an attribution requirement, that means you can use the work, but you need to attribute the original author. You have to have a credit for the originator of that work if you're going to use it. The second is non-commercial, and that just means that if you use that work, whatever you do with it, you cannot then sell for commercial purposes. So you couldn't use it in an advertisement. You couldn't use it as the cover of a book and then sell the book. Uh, it has to be given away uh, for nonprofit use. The next is the share alike restriction, and that means that whatever you use that work for, you then must release that new thing you've created under the same Creative Commons license that you took that thing from. So that means if you uh, alter, let's say, a photo and put it into a PowerPoint, you need to release that PowerPoint under a Creative Commons license. Then the final one is non-derivative, which means uh, you can use the original work, but you can't edit it, can't crop a photograph, can't uh, Photoshop it in any way. It has to uh, be presented in its original form uh, in whatever you use. Now, you can still use those kinds of things in books and things like that. Just changing the medium doesn't mean that, but it doesn't mean it does mean that you can't crop it or do anything like that with it. And it's important to note that these different restrictions can be mixed and matched in different ways. So you might have someone who just says, uh, you don't have to give me attribution, but you can't uh, use it for commercial purposes. You might have someone who says, you have to attribute me and it can't be a de uh, derivative work. Uh, so again, when you find a Creative Commons piece of media that you want to use, be very, very attentive to what are the actual restrictions that have been put on that piece of work so that you know how best to uh, attribute if you need to and how best to use that piece of work so you don't get into trouble. 
So with that, I want to share some of the sites online that I use on a regular basis when I'm putting together PowerPoints or printed materials, uh, worship aids, uh, that I know I can go to and find good quality either public domain or Creative Commons licensed materials. And the first may kind of surprise some people, the Wikimedia Commons site. This is the media repository uh, for Wikipedia. Uh, some years ago, Wikipedia I knew that they had a lot of images uh, in the Wikipedia site that were copyrighted, and so they made a concerted effort to go through and say, all right, we're going to try to get rid of all the copyright images off of our site, um, since we don't have the right to use them, and find only public domain or Creative Commons media to put into Wikipedia. And so Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, then, is the repository of all of those things. And this is a great place to go to to find religious artwork. Uh, especially paintings from, uh, you know, the Renaissance and things like that. There are wonderful, wonderful um, scans of those that people have put up into Wikimedia Commons. And so if you just go to the site, which is commons.wikimedia.org, and go into the search tab, and let's search for Resurrection of Jesus. And you can actually see there's, uh, it'll give you suggestions, but if we search for Resurrection of Jesus... And here is a category for that, Resurrection of Christ. And you can see there are all sorts of subcontents here about different types, you know, the appearance to the women, uh, the disciples investigating, the Emmaus story. You can click through all of those and then find all of these great old paintings. And if you click on them, you can see you'll get all sorts of file sizes down here that you can download, whether you want a small or large. I usually try to download the largest possible, and I actually keep those on my computer, uh, so I don't have to constantly go back here. But if you scroll down, you'll find what the license is. So in this case, this particular image is under a Creative Commons license with an attribution and share alike restriction. So if I were to put this into a PowerPoint, I would have to attribute uh, the author and then, uh, and then release that PowerPoint itself under Creative Commons if I were to share it with other people. But there's a lot of public domain images on here as well. So let's go to, uh, oh, James Tissot. This is actually one of my favorite uh, painters that I like to use and stuff in part because all of his stuff is old enough that it is in the public domain. In fact, if we scroll down, we'll see this work is in the public domain. And so I know that I can download any of these file sizes and use them uh, in any way that I want because they're in the public domain. And again, you can search for saints, you can search for um, specific locations if there's a specific church. You know, if it's mentioned on Wikipedia and has a picture there, you'll be able to find that here. Uh, again, I like to use a lot of Bible stories. There's great artwork that you can find here. Uh, even some up-to-date stuff. There are some pictures like of Pope Francis that are Creative Commons license that are on here. Um, just again, be sure you scroll down, double check what the license is so you know what you can use. But uh, Wikimedia Commons has really become one of my go-to places uh, for religious artwork. The next site I want to talk about is unsplash.com. Now this is just kind of a general purpose photo sharing site, but the photographers that have put their photos up here have released them to the general public, basically under a public domain um, situation. So anything that you find here, you don't have to give attribution, uh, you can do whatever you want with them, edit the images, um, and there's some great stuff in here. Now, uh, because it's general purpose, there's not going to be as much religious stuff in here. Uh, but oftentimes you can find good pictures of architecture, or if you're looking for photos of people in specific situations, uh, you'll find lots of stuff on unsplash.com. And I like Unsplash a lot because the images tend to be very high quality. I don't have to go searching around a whole lot uh, and, and go through some uh, lower quality pictures. But there's lots of great stuff, really high quality photography on this site. And again, you can use this for whatever you want. There's no restrictions on how you use the images on unsplash.com. Now, in my first video, I talked about morgue file, and morgue file is still high on my list. Uh, 
there's still great stuff on here. You do have to wade through some lower quality stuff. Some of the stuff is a little snapshotty. Uh, sometimes it's a little blurry if the photograph's not great. But there are some great photos you can find on morgue file if you can't find stuff in other places. Another one that I like a lot is Gratisography, which is run by a guy named Ryan McGuire. And uh, again, there are no copyright restrictions on any of the stuff he posts on this site. Uh, they are free to use, no attribution required. Uh, again, it's they're not going to find any religious stuff here, but he has a lot of really fun and quirky pictures that he has put up here. I like to use these in presentations when I'm trying to make a, a particular point. If I can find something in here that's kind of going to uh, wake the audience up a, a little bit, uh, get them to take notice just because of using a little quirky or interesting image, something kind of outside the norm of what they might find in a, a catechetical or a religious presentation. Sometimes it's fun just to scroll through and, and see some of the new stuff he's put up. So gratisography.com, another great site to find uh, kind of offbeat images. And then the final site, and this is one that I did talk about in the first video, is compfight.com. Now, compfight isn't itself an image repository. Rather, compfight will let you search Flickr. Uh, so again, we can, let's say, search for the Bible. And it's going to show us everything on Flickr that has to do with the Bible. Now, it's important to note that uh, Flickr, Flickr is really not going to have much in the way of public domain. And it's going to have a lot of images on it that are under copyright with no Creative Commons license. So make sure when you're searching Comfite that the Creative Commons link over here on the left has been clicked on so that what comes up will only be Creative Commons licensed images. Now, I've, I don't use Comfite as much as I used to anymore, in part because I can find so many great free images on some of those other sites that I mentioned. This will kind of be my last resort. Um, but there can be some interesting things. Uh, just make sure you click on that Some Rights Reserved link, and that will take you to the Creative Commons site and will tell you what Creative Commons license it's licensed other. In this case, uh, this particular image that I was looking at just has an attribution attached to it, so that uh, if I were to download this image and use it, I just need to make sure that I give an attribution to the person who originally uh, uploaded the picture in the first place. So I hope you find that helpful and will give you some ideas of how to incorporate good copyright-free images into your catechetical or ministerial work. If you have your own favorite site that you'd like to go to, share it in the comments down below. I'd love to hear about it. If you like this video, make sure you click the like button and you can subscribe to my channel to find more catechetical videos. Thanks so much and God bless.